So this is uh, more of an update and um, kind of where we came from and project-wise, I don't know, uh, a lot of TxDOT folks here, a lot of consultants, uh, TxDOT has implemented project-wise statewide and uh, I just have some updates and kind of where we're going, where we've been, what we've done. So our initial project-wise pilot was, if you want to call it a pilot, uh, pilots don't normally last this long, but it, it started around 2008 and it ran 20, 2013, 2014 when we, when we started the new project-wise project. Uh, we were in San Antonio mainly and the uh, New Braunfels area office. There were many, many issues with the uh, implementation mainly because our integration servers, which were on-premises at the time, were shared by GIS servers. Uh, we also had a, a very slow and outdated network. Uh, we hadn't had the funding, we didn't have the administration backing at that time to, to push for a new, faster network. The other district that piloted was San Angelo and Childress. Childress didn't really do a lot of piloting. They worked with the Waco district in their construction of I-35 or the design of I-35. Uh, they were working with mainly with consultants, but the, uh, the San Angelo district, they actually were very heavy into Project WISE as well. So once we, let, once we started our new Project WISE project in 2014, there were obviously a lot of things that we had to improve. Uh, the main thing was the caching servers, um, the slow network, the network bandwidth speeds, which is, is two separate issues. Uh, the, the slow network being uh, the internal network and the, the bandwidth being the external network. And, that, uh, and then obviously the, the old, well, for those of y'all that don't know, the old project-wise wouldn't allow you to keep the GPK file in project-wise. So you had to store that into, in the Nobel network or your C drive or something like that and then reference it that way. So as part of an add-on, so to speak, to our ESS, uh, which is our engineering software solution project that we started in May of 2014, the very last minute we added ProjectWise, and uh, and that that was I want to say it wasn't well thought out. It, it was mainly it was mainly just something that we decided that we needed. Uh, Janice Mullinex and Randy Hopman and and Renee Garcia, they you know in, the, in our negotiations we really wanted to push for something that could help us our Nobel network was really causing us problems connectivity from the end users to the servers were a big problem so we started that in conjunction with our ESS and you can see this is our waves and um, we started in Austin and San Antonio Austin because it was close and San Antonio because they were they were very familiar with it and then uh, we we kind of started regionally which is a bad word we shouldn't use, but uh, we, that's what we did. That was, was in the contract, so we, we kind of went around the state. Okay, so to solve our bandwidth issue, um, our, at, at the time, Janice and, and our uh, technology team, she was over IT and Tim Jennings and that group, we set off to update our bandwidth. And you can see that our, our band, before bandwidth is, kind of looks like a typo. I mean, this is TxDOT, right? Um, this is Texas, but our, at the time, our, our metro bandwidth was at 20 megabits a second. You know, I have 20 megabits a second at home. You know, your, your cell phone does 20 megabits a second. Our, our rural districts were at five to 10. Uh, so you can imagine the pain in, in trying to download things, uh, large microstation files, imagery, anything that went with project-wise was, was going to be a problem. And TxDOT's project-wise solution is cloud-based. So that doesn't, it's not here on the slide, but to give everyone an understanding, right now we use an Amazon cloud, and, uh, and that means every part of our project-wise is in the cloud. Uh, our GPK files are in the cloud, our microstation files are in the cloud. Any file that you access is in the cloud. So what we, uh, what we did is we, we upgraded
upgraded the bandwidth, um, and you can see that four of the districts got 100, um, Houston and Dallas. Austin got 100, um, and uh, I'm not quite sure why Lubbock got 100, but they got it. Um, maybe it's because they have the most roads, right? I mean, if you remember the trivia this morning, um, that our 17 of the districts got 40, which you can see it, most of it, that was four to eight times what they used to have. Uh, there is one district with 20, which is San Angelo. They have a, an older network, and Brian here in um, uh, College Station area, we're waiting on their infrastructure. So that's hopefully happening in the next few months. They won't be stuck at 13. Okay, so the second part of this was our, our network, internal network. And because we had our caching servers locally, but our, our, our initial integration server in Austin on a very slow network, you know, we saw the need to make sure that we had plenty of caching servers. So uh, Bentley and TechStot and NTT Data got together and they came up with a metric. And uh, it, it's, it's somewhere around six designers. We don't worry about non-designers on project-wise because they're frankly not using that much bandwidth. Uh, but you can see that the, uh, the metro districts have, have more than one, um, Houston and Dallas leading, Fort Worth and Austin. The rest of them just have one. Now that doesn't mean they can't get another one if, uh, for example, the far district or you know, one of the, the other larger urban districts uh, starts growing or they have an area office that needs it, uh, they can get another one. San Antonio is actually, I think, going to get a fourth one here pretty soon. They are opening a new uh, area office. So, you know, when the cloud-based integration server is, is a huge key, um, it, it's very fast and it's really, it, it really makes it to where your, your project-wise is as fast as your internet connection. Uh, so we're not saying this is perfect and obviously in the future, uh, you know, it'll have to improve, but the, the basic part of this is if, if you have an internet connection, you can get the project twice. So what does that mean? I mean, that, that basically tells you that if you're in the field, if you're at home, if you're at a hotel, um, if you have an internet connection, you can get to your data. Um, the other thing that's not up here to say is that Texas also went to a, a cloud-based um, license server. So our, our old license server was internal uh, at Camp Hubbard, and, and then it got moved when we did our data consolidation uh, to a data center. And we had a lot of problems with licensing when that happened. Uh, so we decided to move our, uh, our licensing server to the cloud. So because our licensing server is in the cloud and our project wise is in the cloud, it, it really means that our designers and our, the support for the design can, can basically work wherever they want to, anywhere in the world, as long as you have an internet connection. Yeah, I left anything off there. I don't think so. Okay. Okay, so the, getting back to solving system performance. Now, I, I don't expect you to read this slide. Uh, the purpose of this slide is really to, um, to talk about what, what is ProjectWise and, and what can you do in ProjectWise? Because when we first got into this, we, you know, we still kept our imagery on the network, uh, and some districts still do. You know, some districts kept their LiDAR data on the network. You might keep a microstation file on the network. And so what we found about 12 months into it, as, as designers really started using it, it, we found that if you mix the networks, then basically uh, MicroStation cannot handle that. Um, now that, that's, that's not to say that out in the world that, you know, that's not TechStot, that they couldn't mix it and it wouldn't work. TechStot still uses Novell, and so what was happening is the Novell latency uh, between the end user and the server, it kept getting disconnected, it kept getting interrupted, and when that happened, the, the network, or the MicroStation would just crash, GeoPack would crash. So what we discovered is there is a tab on in, micro, in uh, ProjectWise uh, called the Dependency Viewer. And so one of the first things I show a district now when I show up there and I ask them, are, you know, and it's basically this question, are you all in? Are you, in all, are you all in ProjectWise? And they're, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, in, I'm all in, I'm, I'm ready to go. And uh, I say, okay, well show me one of your MicroStation files. So they, they click on it. 
and, uh, and then I click the dependency viewer, and I'll say, is this really all of your reference files? Well, no, this file isn't there. So we'll double click on it and we'll open it and you'll see that things are missing. And so one of the things that you really wanna make sure, so this is just sort of a tip for, uh, for us designers, or, um, is, is you wanna make sure everything is in project wise. So what Text.Dot is doing is we're moving our imagery and our survey data and things that are referenced in ProjectWise and MicroStation sees all these are references. So even though they're images, uh, they, they're actually references in, in MicroStation, um, they, it shows them as references. And so if they're not in ProjectWise, well, guess what? I can't support you because I don't have access to your data. Uh, your system is going to crash and so you're going to call our IT support or you're going to call me or or Max's group and you're going to complain and we're going to ask you, hey, is all your files in ProjectWise and then we're going to help you show you how to make sure that that's done. Okay, so then the, the, the last challenge, so to speak, and it's, it's more of an ongoing challenge, this is just sort of a scale of Texas. So Texas is really big and uh, this sort of shows that. We have one of the largest implementations of ProjectWise in the country, if not the world. Um, we have, um, it, it shows here, we have, we have over a thousand users a day. Uh, we have over 3,600 accounts at the moment of ProjectWise. Now they're not all using it. We trained most of them. Um, some of them are not in it yet or their district isn't all in it yet, but, um, but our, um, are also our, our total projects active, we have 2,100 projects or more. And, and that's in, in basically uh, one year, I don't think Houston has had it a year yet. So from our implementation being completed, one year in, we are at 2,100 projects. Now, I, I will also stop to say here that all 2,100 projects aren't being used every day, okay? And so there's a lot of pro placeholder projects. Um, but as y'all, anyone that uses ProjectWise know, there's not really a good way of indicating empty projects, uh, but, but most of them are being used. If you, if you click on them, if you go through the files, if you go through the folders, you can see that there's projects. Then uh, this is just a map of, of who's using it most. Um, you can, you know, Houston being our largest district, uh, they, they're, they're not even in it for eight months. Um, Austin has been in it the longest. They, they have most of the projects, Fort Worth and Dallas, and then Odessa is, is heavy in. Okay, so my last slide um, has to do with where we're going. So where are, we, where are we today? So today we are, I would call us, you know, infants. Uh, we're, we're baby project wisers, you know. I mean, San Antonio got to use it, but Text.Wide, wide, we we've only had it a year and a half. So, in, in, you know, I have four kids. So, in child years, you know, we're not even walking. Well, we're barely crawling. Uh, so, we're, we're we're pushing our our users to learn to get everything in, how to reference scan, how to get to the stuff. Um, where we're going next, uh, Text.Wide is is moving toward SS4. So we're moving toward SS4 uh, MicroStation and Geopack. Initially, we're probably going to have SS4 ProjectWise on those builds, and then uh, shortly there after that, we'll go to ProjectWise Connect. So what will ProjectWise Connect get us? Um, it's this is so the SS4 is in the November timeframe, so it's not very far away. Um, the SUDA portion of that is not going to happen until next calendar year. Uh, for those of y'all that that are interested in that. And then ProjectWise Connect internally, uh, we're hoping for January. That's mainly gonna be just a client uh, push. External, so external is gonna be huge for TechStot and the consultant world. We're, we're gonna be at a stage where we can have y'all work on y'all's ProjectWise files uh, and on MicroStation and Geopack files in the TechStot environment. Um, or, or we can have it to where y'all push the stuff to us. So it's, there's going to be a few options there. We're not, that project hasn't kicked off yet, but we're hoping to have some consultants in our, in our workspace in the March timeframe. 
Um, and then everyone keeps asking me, uh, when are we going to connect 64-bit, you know, um, microstation and open roads? That is to be, that's to be determined. Um, if I was going to guess, I would say 18 months from, from January. Um, but that is, uh, that's also a huge undertaking because as y'all may know, there, there's a lot of changes, um, and the geopack doesn't really exist very much, so. Okay, uh, for those tech stop folks, this is just a slide. If you please go to our new website, go to Crossroads and click on uh, Project Wise and 3D Design. It's very good. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, I work for IMD, I'm an IT project manager. And uh, if you are work for TechStop, you can email 3D Design if you want to uh, Ask a 3D design question or a project-wise if you have a project-wise question. So 